This is The Change Physician, episode 99. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of The Change Physician podcast. I am your host, Dr. Kevin Kukara, with my fabulous co-host, Dr. Melissa Katie. Dr. Katie, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm excited about 99. 99, episode 99. Is, I guess I tonight we're going to party like it's episode 99. I know. We're I know. I keep about... Prince. <laughs> you know, and, and Prince is an interesting thing because I, um, you know, I liked Prince, but you never, you know, so you don't really appreciate people, I guess, until sometimes, well, we should appreciate more before they're gone. But when Prince died, um, I did not realize how talented he was. Like he was an absolutely unbelievably talented guitar player. Like, I just never, ever really thought about it until people were commenting on it. And I'm watching these videos of some of his guitar solos. And then, um, and particularly when he did the, uh, the uh, Super Bowl, mid, the mid Super Bowl thing. Mm -hmm. And the, the story behind it apparently is, and he just blew the crowd out. And, I, and you can watch it on YouTube and it's, it is, it's absolutely insane. And it's pouring rain. Mm -hmm. And they're, and apparently they called him and they're like, oh, you know, oh my God, it's raining. Are you in trouble? And he's like, he goes, I'm good. Can you tell it to rain harder? <laughs> and it's like, and he just went out there and just rocked the place. So uh, yeah. anyway, sad that Prince is gone, but it is up 99. Yeah. But it's a great segue. And because we recognize his value, mm -hmm. it's segue into what we're going to talk about. Which is the values behind such things as a value-driven practice. So in episode 98, we talked about the value-driven practice, where it is finding a way in, in to align both the tangible and intangibles behind practice delivery between who the client is and the service provider. And I'm using that. I know people hate the word provider, but we're using it in kind of a gener generic way. We're not calling you a provider. We're saying that you provide a service. Therefore, you are a service provider. And then there is a recipient of that service, which is then your client. For anesthesia being you have the client who's a surgeon and you have the client who is the 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 patient who is receiving care from both the anesthesiologist as well as the surgeon um, but in order to kind of define that you have to understand what values are and so to introduce that discuss discussion and the importance behind defining your values that you can then use not only just to design your practice but in order to find things that align with those what are values so values to me are not necessarily monetarily um, although they could be um, but the best quote around this is the, the and I'm going to use it is the difference between beliefs and values, because sometimes people will interchange those and they're not the same thing. But Adam Grant, who's a psychologist, and he just came out with a, a fantastic book called Think Again, which I'm just starting to read. But I was listening to him on a podcast and they were trying to, to differentiate beliefs from values. And what he said was, Beliefs are things that you think are true. Values are things that you think are important. And that distinguishing characteristic is incredibly important because um, beliefs have a tendency to react. And particularly in the political spectrum and, and things, if you're, if you're work, working and trying to work around people's beliefs, you're going to have more, more conflict. And if around your beliefs and, you're, and, you don't, and you don't understand the difference between a belief and a value, you may actually struggle with some of your interactions and finding the perfect practice as well. But if you identify what your values are, i.e. what is important to you, that changes the game. So on a one-to-one -one issue, you can talk, talk about values. What, what, what is important to the other person? Is that aligned with what is important to me? Hey, now we have a ground of work versus the beliefs may actually be in conflict. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the way to start this then is to, to understand in order to create a value-driven practice or in order to find in many ways a sense of calm, stability, worth, uh, where you are not in conflict with things is to be able to define firmly what your values are. So going back to where we talked about the difference between values and, and money, your value, well, if, you, if you think money is incredibly important to you, that may be a value to you, in which case you are going to actively pursue or you should actively pursue something that is going to provide you the greatest monetary reward because that is important to you. Money is important to you. Now that brings up a whole other discussion of what that may have, you know, what's the value behind that value, which may add some insight in there. Um, but what I, I would be curious, given we talked about your, your practice and how you sort of crafted that, what are your values when it comes to delivering medical, medical care and how, did you identify those values? Did you either do it um, overtly or did you, is, was it more sort of in the background that you were kind of never thought about it 
consciously, but we're sort of unconsciously driving you. I think a lot of my values were unconsciously driving me in my professional development. So I even remember um, back when I finished my pain fellowship, which we've talked about how unique that was that I never wanted. I didn't say never. I wasn't inclined to necessarily pick a full-time job. Um, I valued freedom. I valued travel. I valued, um, I think I uh, unconsciously or somehow subconsciously, I was predicting that I needed something else besides work. Um, so that time freedom was somehow always in the back of my mind. I think I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset too. Um, but I think that I remember specifically, and I even pulled out like little things I got in the mail that said, you know, make a million dollars doing pain and all this stuff. And I would just sit there and I would think to myself, I would get sick in the pit of my stomach because I, I felt like it was probably not going to be in alignment with my values. And I didn't really think of it in those words, but I thought I knew what that meant. No time freedom, like no, uh, like lots of money, but no time to enjoy it. And what kind of like crazy schedule am I going to have to have to like generate that kind of income for a practice? And what kind of pressures are they going to put on me to take away the things that I value? The value is to have an engagement with the patient and understand them, hear their story and feel like I'm delivering um, my, just whether it's an education or a reinterpretation, like basically giving their story back, make sure that they feel like they've been heard. All of those things that I value and I feel like are critical components to having a good interaction in the medical world, I feel like that would have been stripped away from me and I would be miserable. So it's weird. It's like, I feel like I never really valued the dollar, not in the way that I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just find the biggest pain job and go after it. Never. Like I've never, like, it'd be nice if I could still deliver the value based care or driven care and make, it'd be great if I could make twice as much still doing the same thing, the way I want to do it. The problem is there's a price you pay. And so I, I wasn't willing to pay that price. And so essentially I've worked part-time, slightly full-time just because I put extra energy into things. Um, but that's, that's kind of, I guess, where I value things is the patient interaction and demonstrating care to the patient and, you know, educating them along the way. So they feel more informed. I, I, I think that's where, unless I'm missing something that you've witnessed in me, I think that's where I value things. Uh, it's just, it was a question just for really the audience to kind of get that perspective of how you're identifying those things. So, um, it was, you know, because values, the things that are important to you, there's almost like the superficial, it's almost like, kind of reminds me of beliefs are superficial beliefs and they go down to your core beliefs and values are sort of, well, what is your core value? We can kind of go from superficial values down and money may people may actually think, well, money is a value for me, but I would actually say, well, what you do is you go, well, money is important to me because of blank. Why? Is it money just for money's purpose? In a situation like that, well, maybe then money is a core value. That's it's kind of sick and twisted, folks, but that's, <laughs> that would be the way. But if you, if you say something different, like, hey, money is important to me because it provides a sense of safety given on my upbringing where we perhaps had a lack. That's different. Because now we're looking, then you, when you're identifying behind that is this core, this core, what it matters to you is safety. And if safety matters to you, then yes, the monetary value of the practice is going to be an issue. But other things that you may want to consider then is the stability. What are, how often is the turnover with the other clinicians that you're involved with? What is the current environment? What is the hospital-based environment? Are they in flux? Because that can be something as well. If your hospital is failing, that may not provide you that security, but being able to, again, identify what those core things are. So you, you said, well, you, you know, first you're coming out of fellowship. One of the first things you was like, is this time? So time is important to me because of blank. Like that would be one way I would, I would do it for me when I was getting those notices in the Navy, I remember, um, you know, cause they are, they were just sick, like make, I mean, 
ungodly sums of money and yeah. and having seen like in the military we would occasionally have people that cross paths that had been seen in the civilian world oh my god and it was just atrocious that was happening to people it makes again makes you sick what's going on out there mm -hmm. um what what i saw that was this is practicing to the lowest common denominator they're they're what they're going to do is they're just like they said is they're just going to be extraordinarily busy it's going to be extraordinarily high volume it's not because you're doing things for the right reasons, but you're doing them because it's the quickest path to the dollar. Mm -hmm. And that interfered with one of my core values, um, which is truth. Like mm -hmm. it, that is a huge, big deal to me. So, you know, doing what is right is important to me because it is part of what I call, you know, what you see as truth. There's, there's data behind it. There's evidence behind it. There's supportive of it. It's something that when you strip away that the data becomes in its some way pure. Um, but for, for anybody out there, again, if you, if you're coming out of practice is to identify both the tangible, what's the offer on the table, but the intangible things and how those align with you. It may be, like you said, if it's a time perspective, time is important to me because why, or maybe I have young kids. I want to make sure that I'm not missing their youth. Maybe it is that I love the chance to go out and explore other new situations. So I want to be able to travel like in, in your situation, um, is it safety? Is it growth? Because a growth, a growth value is going to be very different. You're going to probably want to be in a practice where now are you being challenged every day? Maybe you're a researcher at heart and you want to be in some academic center where they're seeing the weirdest stuff in the world because that makes you grow. Um, but that, you know, again, it's one of those things that we don't tend to not talk about, but what are your core values? Why are they your core values? And then how best can you build in to your day-to-day -day existence through practice and everything out there. We're talking practice specifically here that you are then aligning that practice with those values that are yours. And that, again, that'll change some of those tangibles and, and emphasize more of those intangible um, uh, aspects to that environment or practice that you're in. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I think that this podcast helps me grow as an individual because I get to listen to you um, dive into the things that you've done in your own personal growth and you help um, unveil some of the things. I think that's why we align too, is because these deeper values that you are better at um, putting into words um, on what's been driving me, I think they're very similar. And truth, I think I may have said that you brought it up before, but that is there is no doubt, even my own personal relationships and, and within my career that I, it's not that I necessarily want to be right when I try to bring up like correcting something. It's like, it is based on this value of truth and transparency. And, and um, I do feel like that, you know, I'm glad you said that because there is a really it's so you can be blind to it. It's so deeply hidden in there. That's guiding a lot of things. And the things that I value, even before I even started my career, when I was in an unhealthy relationship, I even specifically said, I don't ever want to be a fool. I want to be, you know, told the truth, no matter how much it hurts. Like I want to know the truth. And that's super important for me. And I find it's interesting that it also applies to my career. And and providing truth to patients and trying to be, you know, not to scare the living daylights out of them, but to give them some basic guidance and understanding and truth on what to expect. And so um, I'm really glad you brought that up because truth and safety are core values for just my personal care of patients. Um, and it's guided probably what I've curated throughout this past year. And not only do I like to have the freedom of time and to travel, but the actual engagement with patients, those values uh, ring true as well. And, and so you think, well, that in, engagement with, with my patients is important because of, and then you can kind of have what, whatever. Providing truth. Well, they're fighting truth, but you can provide truth without having engagement, right? Mm, I guess. So is there, you know, is there, is that you like connecting with people to see how they click or to, to have a sense of connection with others? So connection can be a, a value. Um, yeah. if, if connection isn't necessarily a, a core thing for you, cause you can do, you can, you can deliver truth in many different ways. Yeah. You can do it in a very, uh, caustic manner 
yeah. in conflict driven way if if um and I'm just thinking about that because I have a tendency to be a little bit more caustic and things about well, this stuff. But, uh, I don't want to, but um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, in a selfish way, it I feel appreciated mm -hmm. that I'm providing something that other people won't or don't or don't have the time for, don't have the environment for, and it feels really good, you know, just from a personal, um, you know, I wouldn't say achievement, but more of for, um, it just feels really good to give just provide value beyond what everyone else is doing. I don't know how else to describe that, but um, it, it is a little bit of a being creative, the entrepreneurial side and providing a, creating a service that creates value. Well, and, it, and it's also a core element of being a human. So if, if you kind of go through, we, we've talked about Tony Robbins in a previous episode, he talks about the, like the, seek, the six core values or the six core things that everybody wants there. They're, um, certainty uncertainty connection and um significance being like the the bottom four and the other ones being growth and contribution he calls the big one and what's kind of interesting about the the tony robbins stuff and a lot of things in that per personal development world is then if you start moving into the more science fact area that is actually aligned quite a bit I'm, I'm reading a really great book called transcend by scott barry kaufman who's a psychologist has his own podcast apparently we should probably try to see if we can get him on here uh, where he was sort of a student of Maslow, of uh, Maslow's hierarchy, right? And that is like everything else in the world has com completely been butchered by the media because apparently they see it as this pyramidal thing and it's actually not a pyramid. Um, but when he talks about like these, 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 uh, I'm gonna say Maslowian principles here, mm -hmm. um, they actually align pretty well. That connection is a core human. We want to be connected. We're a social beast in many ways. And then that also then seems to be aligned with significance, what provides meaning to you. And so each of us, no matter who we are, we're trying to establish in some way that my life has meaning. And if you don't, that actually is associated with some like severe pathology. And or if you don't have think like you have meaning or you are not meaningful, it's associated with increased risky behaviors, all sorts of other things that we tend to, you know, say, well, this person is just an awful person. Well, they're not an awful person. They may actually have something in their core that has not provided meaning to them or they're not identifying that they are important. So yeah. I just kind of bring that up. There's a lot of stuff is actually um, it, it is universal. So we're talking about values and you can have sort of the values that are important to you. And then there are sort of the values, or I should say maybe that kind of the core kind of identity pieces that are important to humans as a species. So, yeah, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of, uh, it sounds like you're reading a few books at once, but I think, yeah, I, yeah, I five, yeah. five right now. <laughs> so, yeah. I think a lot of those can, um, we can dive deeper in to some of those different perspectives with those um, authors uh, or other people like them. So that that would be a great extension of just what we're speaking of here for personal development. Um, I'd, I'd be excited to tap into that. Well, and we, and we and I think that there's, we're gonna be talking about those topics in future episodes for sure. This one specifically though, is kind of returning about to the two values mm -hmm. is this is it, it one of the foundations of, of kind of moving into that personal development space is to start understanding who you are. And if you don't understand what is important to you and you haven't taken the moment to actually start defining that, one, there may be situations where things may feel uncomfortable and you're not going to know why. And if you don't know why, you're not going to be able to change them. Um, two, you may find yourself in a situation where your, your values are actually in conflict with whatever environment. You're, and then you may actually get stuck. And then you have a problem that's even going to be worse than it started with. Uh, and I think we've all done that, by the way. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's almost in some ways you can think of it as the start of that, of that journey of developing who you are is to find, again, what is important to you? Because if you don't know what that is, the next steps you take, the path that you go down is going to be extraordinarily difficult to do. And you're almost going to be flailing kind of through that darkness here because you're not going to know where you're starting from. So I think I'm really excited for all those future discussions, but I'm going to advise everybody out there to take a couple of minutes and actually start figuring out what are those important things to you. And then to go a step deeper is to identify why what you said or why what you've written down is important. So it's X is important to me because of, to try to identify what that core value is. 
Yeah, what you just said there, I'm going to have to just cut as a trailer and put that out there because that was like spot on, I think, inspiring of like what the intention is behind, you know, this podcast. And uh, I will say from personal experience, uh, sometimes just being in the moment and trying to like understand yourself, I think sometimes listening to podcasts like this and other people that are articulating the um, values or maybe words that you don't really use to describe situations, hearing people articulate in different ways um, and different perspectives sometimes can be like the aha moment for yourself. And it's not necessarily an overnight, like, you know, you just spend the time, put 30 minutes in and you know who you are. This is like an evolution and evolving process. And um, especially when we're wired a certain way to think a certain way. And I think incorporating different perspectives and hearing people talk about, you know, whether it's the research or just experiences or the intangibles. Um, I know I need that and it helps me um, find the words to help describe who I am and what I value. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, well, I, I completely agree. And it's, and it's, it's a journey, right? It never ends. Yeah, so yeah. we're always sort of learning and growing. And um, to me, that's what makes life fun. <laughs> it's exactly. Like it, it's, uh, it's great. So, um, yeah. all right, well, I think well, we should let's end this one before we start talking about everything else. And why don't you, yeah, why don't you take us out there, Dr. Katie? I will. And so this is just really exciting. This is episode 99. And, uh, you know, two people doing a podcast co hosting together. And this has been, um, you know, a fun year to explore all these different stories of people that are finding cool ways to adapt their lives or practices, um, their professions. And this transition, the next episode will be the 100th episode. It'll be a, a unique one, um, a little bit different. We're going to put a little, um, collage of things you go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll explain it at the beginning of the episode but um, I look forward to sharing uh, or we look forward to sharing the hundredth episode and then the eventual uh, evolution of various types of diving deep into personal development so if you have not joined the change physician community please go to the changephysician.com we'd love to see you there uh, we'll give you some updates on things that are happening in the future and just stay tuned uh, again, thank you again. I'm Melissa Cady, the Challenge Doctor with my co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro, and we'll see you on the 100th episode. See you later. Take care, folks.